Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I am your host, Ricky Camilleri. John Cena has gone from wrestler to action star to comedy star, and yet, I believe he still wrestles. His new film, Blockers, stars him, Geraldine Viswanathan, Ike Barinholtz, Leslie Mann, and it's directed by Kay Cannon, who you may know as the writer of Pitch Perfect. It follows a group of parents as they try to stop their daughters from losing their virginity on prom night. Let's take a look. <laughs> Bye. I think our daughters are friends. I think that makes us friends. <laughs> I'm Hunter. I'm Lisa. That's my Julie. I'm Mitchell. Kale's hero. We did like for the party. I can't believe it's prom. They're so grown up. I can't even hug my daughter anymore without feeling her boobs. <laughs> Just high fives from now on. Julie left her laptop open. You guys are snooping on our kids? No. We don't understand what they're saying, so it's not snooping. Oh my god, I love puzzles. <laughs> Some about an eggplant. And teenage emoji eggplants are dicks. Wait, what? All emojis have a secret meaning, so like trees are we, and this thing is Yas Queen. Yas Queen. So she's gonna get roses, yeah. kiss, and then touch his dick eggplant. Look at all that drool coming out of the smiley face. That's jizz. Stand down. It is. Look, it's coming. But <laughs> this is a sex pet. They're planning on losing their virginity on prom night. I mean, it's not sex. They're just saying, hey, you're OK with me. You're OK with me. Maybe. No, oh, I fucking knew it. Our girls are not thinking things through. I'm going to stop them. I'm in. Let's cock block those motherfuckers. This is our last big night together. This pact is going to make tonight even more perfect. They're getting away. WWVDD. What would Vin Diesel do? <laughs> are known to have superhuman strength. I can do this. What the fuck? This is so messed up. Uh, did your dad try to stop you when you wanted to lose your virginity? He's too busy high-fiving me. I'll do anything for my daughter. What about a little chugging contest? Bring it. Wait, what? We're butt chugging. You got this, dog. No, I'm tagging out. You're in. What? You put a baby. Everything's looser down there. I have a baby out of my butt. On the count of three. One. Oh, not a fan. I am tripping so hard. I just had a vision. My dad was chugging beer through his asshole. I can't do anymore. Pose, Brian. Pose, pose. Oh. <laughs> Ask her. Oh, oh. I would do Please welcome director Kay Cannon, Geraldine Viswanathan, and John Cena. Oh, about it. Uh, guys, congratulations on a really hilarious movie that also, uh, in the end, pulls together a lot of heart. You, you sort of have your cake and eat it at the same time. Congratulations, Kay. Thank you. Uh, I'm curious, this is your first time as a director, but you didn't write this script as well, whereas you've written a number of other scripts, a lot of success with Pitch Perfect. What made you want to direct something that you didn't write? Well, when I got the script, I thought it was super funny, but I also felt like I just connected on it, uh, to it on, on a couple of levels. Like, I've been a teenage girl who wanted things. <laughs> what <laughs> and, things? You know, things. <laughs> and, um, and then I also, I'm a parent of a daughter, and when I got the script, she's now four, but when I got it, she was two. And it really, that, that really was why I wanted to direct it, because I was looking at her, and I was like, she's so perfect, and beautiful and funny and smart and all these things and I'm like one day she's gonna grow up and like bad things might happen to her you know or like what will I be as a parent I, I feel like I'm pretty progressive but like when it comes down to it I just want her to love herself and have have good experiences and so I anyway that's why also it's the only movie I'd been offered to direct so <laughs> So it was a no-brainer in, in, in a lot of ways. Well, what, one of the things that I love about the film is that the teenagers are so much more mature, confident, and aware of what's happening in their world than the parents are. Most of the humor is derived from the parents misunderstanding everything that the teenagers are very confident <laughs> and aware of yeah. in the whole film, whether it's sex or drugs or body positivity or any, anything that the parents just kind of are trying to wrap their heads around but can't figure out. Yeah. That's one, thing, one of the things that I love. 
Oh, great. Thank you. Because that's what we tried to do. I wanted to show like young women as we really, as I say we, as if I'm one of you, but um, uh, as they really are, which is, which is this like having agency over their own bodies and making their own decisions and smart and the things that like maybe parents freak out about, they are not at all freaking out about. Mm -hmm. And I do think at this point when you're a senior in high school and you're going off to college or whatever you're doing, like you're stepping into adulthood. I think parents just freak out. <laughs> I mean, they've been freaking out in the teenage years probably, but I think like like concerned parents or thoughtful parents or you know, parents who just love their kids so much, they're just they are freaking out and doing things they wouldn't normally do. Not like we do in the movie, but um But Chuck? <laughs> yeah. No one but Chuck. No one. Don't try it. That's a PSA. She, she's right. <laughs> John, when you was that in the script when you first got it, and what were your thoughts? Yes, it was, and I was like, "This is never going to work." <laughs> and then it did. I'll say yes. We'll just sort of work it out on the day. No, like, no, like, I, uh, I, I actually, you know, um, the reason the movie has heart is because of the relationships. And Kay, uh, with Oliver, comedic genius, uh, was very steadfast. And the movie has to live and die by the relationships between the parents, between the children. Um, you look at the movie through essentially nine different sets of eyes. And the scene is funny, like really genuinely funny. I remember people not being able to keep it together while staring directly into my butt. <laughs> but it's also a dude saying, I'll, I'll do anything for my daughter. And then they say, okay, how about this? He's like, nope. Ah, uh, yeah, you got me. I'll do anything for my daughter. Yeah. So like, it's a, it's a very funny vehicle and a very funny moment to further the commitment of these parents trying to protect their children from, like Kay says, something they don't need protecting from. Yeah. And I think it's, it's special. We laugh the whole way through the movie, and then you come to that realization that, like, whoa, you know, they, these parents don't understand at all what their kids are doing or going through because they're just a huge generation gap that they don't relate to. But at the same time, they're all just genuinely good folks trying to do the best they can for their kids. And at this current moment, all of their motivations are driven by uh, fear for their children's safety yeah. and well-being, which is totally admirable, but it's also what stops them from being able to understand what, that their kids are on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's their fear and often overprotection that allows uh, the hilarity to ensue, and it's the fact that you just need to let your child live. And, like, they've passed the threshold. I think uh, my character has the biggest... Um, hurdle to jump in that. It's, they're past the threshold of being a child. They are an adult, they're a free thinking person and can now make their own choices. And they're gonna make some wrong ones and they're gonna make some right ones. And I, in the movie, am just not ready to accept that, probably like a lot of parents are. Uh, in the film, Geraldine, you, you play John's uh, daughter. What was it like doing scenes with John Cena? Uh, it, was, it was great. I feel like he was constantly being intimidated by my physical strength and uh <laughs> It's very fair. <laughs> no, it was it was awesome. It was very surreal and but it was it was yeah, it was great. He's so fun to like riff with and um it's a real real dream movie dad for sure. Aww. 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 Do you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna share an awe moment with these two because as the movie went on, um, uh, there was one night we were shooting in a house uh, that had a piano oh. and we were shooting really late and, and Geraldine sat down at the piano and was playing and then John sat next to her and started to play and G Geraldine, I don't know, you remember this? Yes. And Geraldine's like, I was like, oh, I'm, str I, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't play that well or whatever and John, um, who doesn't have any children, by the way, but John was like, no, no, if you just practice one hour a day <laughs> in 30 days, you will have this and you will play beautifully. And I was behind them. I was like, he's parenting her <laughs> in this really also, beautiful, yeah. great way. Like the, they had sort of become, um, you know, like they'd become their characters in a lot of ways of just having this sort of like disciplinary and dad, but in a great way that was like really, you know, you got a teacher. And, Aww. <laughs> I also, the piano. I also feel like that's a great example of you being a very and I a very driven person in some ways. Like practice every day, one hour. I mean, you've had this career arc that very few people can can do. Oh, I, I firmly realize. I still don't know what's going on. I, I, I would how, did, how did this happen? What's I would imagine it's due to extremely hard work and perseverance, or, or just dumb luck. 
Like, I, I don't know. I just got to start playing Powerball. Modest man over here. All right, all right. But, I mean, that's where something like that comes from. Very few people will say, practice one hour a day for 30 days. You'll be great at this. Most people will be like, oh, I eh, just, do what you want. I don't know. Well, um, <laughs> to keep in mind, uh, that philosophy comes to stuff that I genuinely want to do. I really wanted to learn the piano. So it, that's the difficult part is learning the piano. Uh, I've had to practice in order to to be in situations like this. The, one of the first things I said to Kay was like, I'm still very new at this. Uh, please give me direction, even if it's down to like a line reading, because I trust you. I, you know the movie in your head. I know I'm like a little chess piece. I'm not gonna pretend that the movie's about me. I'm a vehicle to move scenes forward and, and I can relate to the story and I read it and love it just like you do, but I'm gonna need some help. And Kay and Geraldine and Ike and Leslie and everyone was like, no problem. And every situation as of late that I've been in, everyone's been the same. Like, no problem, I'll help you out, kid. So surround yourself with wonderful people, be willing to learn, be willing to be humbled, and uh, good stuff will happen. I, you know, I grew up an athlete and, or I was an athlete in college and everything like that, and then I coached track in, in grad school. And I really respond to people who are coachable. And so when I got, like when John was doing the movie, like, I mean, I have this athlete, like, I'm like, oh, he's so coachable. Like, <laughs> it just like, uh, it just really like, it, for the, I, I don't know if it was the same for you, but I just really responded to that and I loved it. Like, I, like, he, like John would literally do, as you can see from the clip, anything I asked him to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, without hesitation, you know, and it's a director's dream, like to have like, going like, well, why do you think I would do that? Like, right, right, <laughs> exactly, or question it. And and Geraldine also like, uh, you've done comedy, but you like in terms of a big movie or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. Like and, um, what I'm trying to say is that it was like all of our first in a way. It was my first time directing, and it was like like uh, the maybe a first time with the, Such with a, the big the movie, movie and about <laughs> first. And <laughs> <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> It was just really nice. It's really, it was really nice to to direct them and to have that same that sort of like team collaboration. Uh, but you guys being really coachable and and and, and respecting me as your coach, it was really Kay's nice. His nickname was Coach <laughs> on set. Was it really? Yeah, John, what you yeah, call absolutely. Him? Coach, yeah. yeah. That, like a self-imposed nickname, call me coach, everybody? No. <laughs> no, I, I think I'm Although started. I, think back, I, I wish I had to other people. Hey, okay, call me coach. <laughs> I'm Coach K, not to yeah. be confused with the uh, head coach of Duke, right? I don't you know. are oh, no, sports I got person. It. Coach Kuczyczewski. Yeah. Coach I can't say yes. this. I can't say yeah. this. Uh, Geraldine, we were talking at the beginning of this interview about how the teenagers in this are more confident and more self-assured and aware than in most movies and TV shows. Mm. What was it like to get a script and to be able to to play that? I mean, I just love the way that your character and her prom date handle drugs in, mm -hmm. in, in the film. It's so, um, I don't want to say open mind. It's op it's just more open-minded than we normally get. Yeah, totally. I mean, that was that's what's so refreshing about it, I think. And like... I don't know. I feel like the like my character was kind of like built up to kind of feel like she's invincible and she wants to try things and you know she ends up finding her limits and yeah. understanding like balance and that you do need to try things but you know you also need to be in check. But yeah, it was very refreshing to see like three fem like young women as well um, like treated with respect and like being nuanced and like able to be just as silly and funny as like a lot of men in in like these kind of movies and so yeah I thought I was really that was something that I really love about this movie for sure. Yeah. Mm. John when did you decide that you wanted to start doing comedy movies? Because coming from wrestling, you, you got thrown into action movies for a little while, I, right? I did. And man, uh, if, if anybody saw those, I owe you some money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> those those checks, will, checks will be... I didn't even way. know you did them. So, uh, so, so that's the right attitude to take, because I'd prefer that none of us agree that they exist either. Uh, so cool. Anywho. Uh, I just want to give you so many props for, I mean, I, I don't think I have seen them. I'm sorry, but I, no fair, one will ever, no one would ever come on stage and say that about, no one would ever have the guts uh, to do that. Uh, okay, I'll, uh, that, it, that's easing into something by laughing at it, but this is why I'll say it. Uh, I love WWE. I love being able to perform in front of a live audience. It is my passion. You're it amazing is, at it. Yeah. Well, uh, it's, it's because I love it. Like, I genuinely love it. My boss started a movie company. He's like, hey, kid, we're going to make our stars bigger stars if we make this movie company, and I need you to go do this movie. Okay, boss, not only do I love performing in front of live people, but I also kind of get the business model. I get what you're doing there. Mm. I did those string of movies 
because it was good for a business model. Uh, being Fred's dad, living in a refrigerator, doing the doing a train wreck with Amy and sisters and blockers. These are all things that I got to hold in my hand and read and whip through and be like, whoa, that's the coolest thing I ever read. So I don't think it's comedy per se. I just think it's the fact that now I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to read something, be like, I like this. Whether I'm her dad or whether I'm the dude that just crosses frame, I would like to be in this because it seems like I know the story, I can relate to the story. The Wall is a good example on the other side of a non-comedy where I loved the movie, spent most of the movie laying in the dirt, but still was happy to be in it because I read it and was like, man, this is awesome. I want to be able to do this. So I just, uh, I was telling somebody in the car, like, holy crap, I get a second chance at the movie biz? That's amazing. No one ever gets a first chance. I get a second chance. I'm very grateful for that, but I've learned from my mistakes. Failure is okay out there, by the way. I, I made the wrong decisions the first time, and now uh, it's not anything about a business model or anything about a brand or anything about even doing jokes. I just read stuff, and this script, I felt the same way as, as Kay about it. It's, it's, it was good. It was good to me for different reasons than it is for everybody else, but like... I just wanted to be a part of it. And I didn't read for a certain piece. I just wanted to be a part of it. So I think it's a different process now. I'm glad you brought up The Wall because The Wall is a different movie than I think when I said your action movies as well. It's a great movie. I really enjoyed that film. Yeah, and, and I want to put that in the It's one of those things where I read, uh, you know, I read the 100 pages like lightning. It was like, uh, yeah, of course I'll do it. What do they want me to do? And it wasn't about, well, I love it, but I need to be this person. And I never approach material like that, ever. If I, if I love something, it, making a movie's tough. It, every day, and that's not directing. Every day for us, it's 12 hours. It's a whole lot of waiting for a director. It's so much more. And then when the movie's done, this is a part of making the movie. You have to tell people, hey, this movie's really good. Go out and see it. Don't see it. You're not of age yet. But everybody else in here, go out and see it. So it's like, it's, it's a lot. Of, it's very labor intensive. And if you're just doing it for financial gain, it is a miserable way to exist because it'll suck the life out of you because you're miserable every day, you make the people around you miserable. But when you read something and it comes to life and you care about it, whether it's laying in the desert heat at 125 degrees or shoving a beer up your butt, either way, <laughs> it's fun and it's awesome and it makes this stuff fun and easy and awesome. So like, it, whether that gets me financial gain or whatever, I don't care. I'm getting to do stuff that I dig, just like I dig running out to the ring acting like a crazy man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there you go, yeah. Oh, uh, 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 oh. Uh. Um, Kay, how did you how did you go about assembling your your cast for for the film? And after you assembled them, did you sort of work with the writers at all to tailor the tailor some of the lines or tailor some of the stuff sort of around your cast? Oh yeah, I mean, as soon as I got the script the script that I read, um, I. Uh, uh, hired, uh, I, I hired my husband, who's a comedy writer, and and we worked on the script. Many writers worked on the script, um, um, and I sort of felt like I was the head writer of a bunch of really great, wonderful people. Because like everybody, anybody who had a good idea for a joke, best idea won. And so if a sound guy was like, "What if you did this?" I was like, "Yeah, I'll take it." <laughs> um, but uh, when I got the script, one of the things I wanted to do was to really like sp uh, specify what the daughters were doing in their deals and sort of put my female perspective uh, onto the, you know, to the screen. But I started, the first person I cast was, uh, it's fun, it's like a little PowerPoint, I can be like, yeah. the first person I cast was uh, Ike. Uh, B Ike Barinholtz and I have known each other for 20 years, we go way back, we did, we improvised in Chicago together. Really? And uh, yeah, we did Boom Chicago in Amsterdam together, I don't know if you know Boom Chicago, it's really great theater. Um, and uh, and so he, I thought he'd be perfect. He read the script. He felt the same way. And that was like a no-brainer. He signed on right away. And then um, John. He's perfect. He's, he's really great. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's weird for me to say, like, my friend Ike is perfect as Hunter, knowing who Hunter is. <laughs> but but it is, uh, he's, he's so good and so funny in it. And then um, John, I had um, thought he, John was super funny in Trainwreck and Sisters. Um, but it wasn't until I uh, was watching him uh, host the ESPYs, and I felt like 
you know, we had rewritten the character to be a big guy who gets emotional and vulnerable. And in the other movies he's done, it's more been about him being that big, tough guy. So when, when he was doing the monologue at the ESPYs, I was like, oh, he's, like, I'm seeing him a little bit more. And I saw him laugh and be a little bit, like, on a softer side and, like, uh, you know, um, joking around and, and telling his jokes. And so I emailed the producers immediately. I was like, John should play Mitchell. And then you came in and auditioned. Yep. Um, and yes. John came in and he was like, uh... I've only had five minutes with the material. <laughs> I'll, uh, <laughs> um, we'll see That's how we do. Impression. This is my impression of you. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Spot on. Okay. It's similar to mine. Looks very good. Yeah. And so he, he sat down, and then, of course, he killed it and was, like, amazing. And, uh, um, and, and so I, that was, like, ended up being a no-brainer. And then, luckily, I sent the script to Leslie, and she really connected to the material. Uh, she was, at the, at the time I sent her the script, she was literally dropping off her daughter to college uh, and uh, whose daughter had moved away to the other side of the country to go to college. And, and so she, like, uh, fingers crossed, I was so happy she said yes. And then the daughters, uh, you guys just straight up auditioned. Mm -hmm. And like, I didn't, like Geraldine put herself on tape. And it was like the 11th hour. I, I saw hundreds of women for these roles. And um, and it wasn't until like right before we started shooting that I found the three, and uh, like you know you were from Australia, so it took us a little bit yeah. to get like make sure that she could be there on the first day of shooting yeah. <laughs> and had a visa and everything like that. But um, yeah, and then I I had a week of rehearsal prior to shooting because I needed the the three daughters to believe that they had grown up together and were best friends and so they had they hadn't been in the same room together and man that first rehearsal where I was like please have chemistry please have a chemistry <laughs> like, each and, other. like like each other please like each other and they did like instantly and they're really close now and uh I was, I was so happy I I love this cast and I I I think that they're just really special I do too, and one of the things that I loved about the film that uh, I don't know if it's a new thing, and I don't necessarily mean to get political at all, but it is a multicultural and LGBT represented cast yeah. and storyline, and I'm wondering if that was in the original script or something that you it wasn't, it's put, up, you put in later, because yeah. it's really a wonderful, I think, depiction or representation of an actual America that we live in, and yeah. not like the, the movie America. Yeah, we uh, we put in the, the storyline of Sam being confused about her sexuality later, and, and to Universal's credit, uh, I got absolutely no pushback. They loved it, and so I was. We were able to tell the story that we wanted to tell with that, and then also the movie is set in Chicago, and I wanted like what, we had these awesome like hundreds of extras who basically went to prom for three weeks, <laughs> and like went to a lake house and partied like the same two hundred and fifty people, and then went to the hotel. And um, I, you know, I grew up near Chicago and I wanted to make sure that prom was diverse, full of like, if you notice like in the background, like it's all people from all different places, all different races, all the, you know, women dancing with women, men dancing with uh, boys, dancing with boys, uh, you know, like um, uh, everybody together because that's what Chicago looks like. And so I, we made an act, you know, we were active about it. We, it was like a conscious effort to make sure that it was felt diverse. Yeah, it's great. Uh, let's get some questions from our audience. Who has a question? Right here. This question is for John. John, thank you for all of your hard work and commitment you've put in the past few years um, at, for C Nation. Um, my question for okay, you. Because that wasn't really a question, but you're welcome. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> um, Just trying to search out the question there. Keep going. Where do we see the career of John Cena going in the next five years? Are we still acting? Knows, man. I don't know. If I can WWE? tell you. I'd write a book about it, and I don't know. I don't know, and that's the weird, you know, I'm 41, so I'm on, like, a weird ticking clock as far as being physical and, and uh, getting my butt kicked in the ring, so I never know when that's going to end, which is awesome because I treat every day like it's my last, and that means I, like, give everything to every day. And I don't know if this any of this stuff is going to work. If you guys like this movie and you go see it, I'll probably get a chance to do another one, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know, and it gives me a, an awesome excited uncertainty because I appreciate every single thing that I'm doing and I don't know when it's going to end. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> Next question. Hi there. Hi. Um, this question's for Geraldine. Uh, actually, all of you. All right. But first off, uh, lifelong Fruity Pebble. So thank you. I'll be at... These uh, are my whatever that is, I hey. love it. <laughs> <laughs> These are my people. This is why this is why, this is why, why this happens. Um, 
uh, I'll be at Mania next week, so good luck. I may um, be sitting next to you. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Better than my That's mom. That's a long story. We're not going to get into it. We're not going to get into it. Um, I actually was privileged to see the movie yesterday, oh, cool. and I absolutely loved it. I Thanks. went in, I'll be honest for you, Mr. Cena, but I came out loving every aspect of it. It wasn't just funny. It had heart. And I'm a comedian, or I try to be myself, but for me, the line is trying to be funny without being offensive. And you guys touched on what could have been offensive topics, but you didn't do it in an offensive way, if that makes sense. So I was wondering if you guys took extra care into making that happen, because if so, you guys really succeeded. Uh, well, thank you so much. I'm, 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 thanks for saying those <laughs> such nice things. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like we... You want to give him that 20 now that we did? <laughs> I was going to say, if he's been a fan for that long, he probably saw these many movies. Oh, yeah, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kate, go ahead. <laughs> Tell us all about those movies. Um, I... <laughs> that Yay! <laughs> that would cover it. A good day. <laughs> What kind of change does he keep in his wallet? Uh, it, it was a lot of movies. <laughs> it was a lot, lot of movies. Anyway, anyway. All right. That is amazing. Please use that to bring anybody else to see Blockers. <laughs> uh, uh, now it's so boring to answer this question, but uh, I felt like... Um, uh, kind of what I like to do with m my work is I, I think we laugh and cry on the same day. So I wanted to have a movie where you had something as crazy as butt chugging and then had this heart that you know, were talking about and that you feel something. There's so much you can watch if you're not moved. Like, who cares it, these days? So I just tried to trust my gut about not offending. And like, w if I felt like it, it didn't offend me, I, tr I tried to you know, gauge it that way. I also showed the movie to a lot of people. We did a lot of previews. And a lot of friends and family came and saw it. And I, I, and I especially, we have this um, uh, sort of coming out story. I wanted to make sure that the, I was being uh, extremely careful and sensitive to, you know, to, to that subject matter and making sure that we were doing it right. You would hate to do it wrong. You'd hate to feel like you were tone deaf to what's happening in the real world. So, yeah, that's kind of a long-winded way of answering that. I think it's time for one more or two more? Two more, right here. Double time. <laughs> Whoa, how do it at the same time. Up at the do same it at the same time. time. <laughs> one word yep. each, back and forth, please. All right, well, uh, how, you do, how you doing, John? How you feeling? I, I just lost 100 bucks. I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> that was $100. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, okay, okay, I thought so that was go. a 10. That's amazing. All right. Are you ready for WrestleMania? <laughs> Are you guys ready for WrestleMania? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Is that the right answer? Yes. Is it the right answer? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Yes. Like I said, the longer version of that plays out every Monday night on WWE TV. You can go see it. We got one week left on TV to WrestleMania. WrestleMania is when, boys? Thank you. I just knew that would happen. <laughs> I just knew that would happen. Two days after uh, what, Kay? Two days after what? Well, let's ask him. When does Blockers come out? <laughs> yeah! All right, okay. I, for some reason, I knew the two guys would know when WrestleMania is. <laughs> Even though they have a cheat sheet into when Blockers <laughs> is. Their vision is cloudy. It's a, it's a big weekend for uh, Cena over here. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a big weekend for Blockers. I, I don't know if I'm going to plug you in. I, I'm going to WrestleMania as a fan, and it's in New Orleans. So I'm going to go, oh, my Sunday good? is going to be like a matinee of blockers, and then I'm going to start drinking hand grenades. <laughs> because finally I get to cheer and boo with everybody, and it's going to be fun. That's so amazing. So like, this is a pretty relaxed uh, okay. WrestleMania for me. Okay. So that's, that's the short version of what's going on. Why is that? What's that? Why is that? Because that's what's supposed to happen. Oh. I, uh, okay. Uh, all right. You're making me purge myself. Okay, here it is. <laughs> I, uh, so I haven't been doing well lately. I've been losing a lot of matches, and, but I've been trying my best. That's what's most important. Uh, so I've been finishing second place is how I like to say it. And I've kind of lost all my opportunities to have a WrestleMania match. And I had one last one, but it means like calling some guy out of retirement who really has never said he's retired, but doesn't want to come back and doesn't want to be retired. And I don't know, you guys don't know, right? So he, uh, <laughs> he must've lost my phone number because he hasn't called me back. And he's my one chance at having a match, and it's at this point it's not going to happen. So we're like, uh, what, ten days away? 
around a week away, I can't put my eggs in the basket that he's going to, like, in four days be like, all right, man, let's do this. So I'm going to New Orleans and enjoying some food and fun and, and WWE WrestleMania. But there's the possibility that he could, like, surprise, show up, and pull you out of the audience. It's also the possibility right? I get that 100 bucks back. <laughs> Don't you dare. Don't you, don't dare. you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you don't, dare. Don't you dare. Don't you do it. Stay in that seat. Thank you stay you. in that Thank seat. <laughs> so you are, you are correct, but it is, uh, it is at this point not probable. I've, d- I've done like all the typical trash talking things to try to conjure up this dude and none of it's working. Oh, uh, okay. What's that? Well, no, because uh, I'm kind of falling on the sword for everybody else because he pr- has a reputation for being pretty good and tough. So... Uh, I don't even think he exists on Twitter. That's kind of how <laughs> mysterious he is. But uh, if you can do any, ha- what do the kids do nowadays? They do emojis, the hash- hashtag stuff. Hashtag. Do that, do that, help me out, help me out somehow. And, and you know what, you know how you can help me out? Go see the movie. Yeah. That's gonna help me out. It's gonna help all of us out. I think we have time for one more we right do. here. How's it going, John? Uh, it's going well. This question's good, I mean, uh, <laughs> So it's a dream of mine to one day, you know, have a feud with you, feud with you in WWE. So, what advice can you give to, uh, you know? That is you really a, wait, that? No, wait, I mean, wait, wait. I, that's a great question. That's a great I question. I mean, I'm free on uh, for WrestleMania, so I understand. I'm going to like defer that one to my consigliere, Geraldine. Okay. How can this man uh, have a feud with me? A in, feud in WWE. Like a physical, like fighting, right? Or dancing? Or, it doesn't matter. Or like a verbal. No, uh, you just, this is where you tell them how to do it. Tell them how to do it. Um, Practice for one hour a day for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How to fight, how to fight John. Yes, how would you um, do that? I think just, like, get him in a, like, knock him down. Get him in a real, like, vulnerable place emotionally. <laughs> and, um. <laughs> so good. <laughs> and, um. It's just like I taught her. <laughs> and then just, I don't know, give him a little, little smack or something. That's why she's the best. <laughs> That's good advice. I get really me in a, hope. I hope get me in a very vulnerable place. Hit, and then hit light, just a little tap. Yeah, a little tap, and you'll just little, pull little over. Tap, tap, more. tap, tap, you do. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, that's what I would do. Thanks. I'll try it eventually. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait a second. I gotta. We gotta keep going. Do we have one more question? Oh, I've seen the marine, by the way. What's that? I've seen the marine and the, all the other films. I'm I'm broke at this uh. point. <laughs> I'm broke. That was a good try, but that's I'm so broke. So funny. Is one in the back, right there, the Adidas sweatshirt in the back. Stand and be recognized. <laughs> Are you going to be Duke Nukem? What's that? Are you going to be Duke Nukem? I am so glad that you enjoyed the movie Blockers. How did you get into an early screening? Oh. Oh. I think it's funny all the way. You liked it? You were laughing the whole way? Here's the thing. Oh, sorry. You probably laughed over 80% of the jokes, and you didn't even get the good part. What, you're going to go back to see it? Oh, uh, You're sure. going back to see it when it opens? That's <laughs> awesome of you, because you saw it for yet. free. Why would you even go back? It's because it was so funny and that good. No, you don't have to tell your friends. You don't have to. You're going to do that? That's fantastic of you to do. Exactly. I really, truly appreciate it. I can't believe for the last question, you would be like, man, the movie killed, and I laughed my ass off, but I'm going back to pay, and I'm going to tell all my friends, and they're going to see it. That's the best last question I've ever heard. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Everybody. Blockers opens April 6th. It's incredibly funny. Go see it and give them a round of applause. Let's hear it. John Cena, Geraldine, and Kay Cannon.